thanks for the opportunity, but also congratulations on, on what you've accomplished uh, by being a part of this program. Uh, thanks for caring so much to put in the additional hours and effort to try to make yourself better in the workplace. That's very commendable. A lot of people would not put forth the effort because it's easier just to kind of maintain and go and get my paycheck and what does it matter? So I think that says a lot about you as individuals and probably says a lot about the team that uh, you're a part of, that, that you have that kind of motivation. Thanks for taking care of everyone in the department, in your departments. And the reason I say that is uh, that I could not exist without the administrative support staff that we have in the athletic department. And quite honestly, this is pretty amazing. We have about 90 staff members, and of those, we really have two ladies that are really administrative support staff. Now we have four ladies that are on the business side, but we really only have two ladies that are supporting all our coaches. Lisa, you know that, you know how it is. <laughs> uh, it's pretty amazing what they do. And uh, Lisa Padron is my associate administrative person and she is my mom away from home. Uh, if she keeps me on track, she makes me feel better, she kicks me in the tail every once in a while, but she runs the show. So thank you for what you do. Well, we could not exist, we could not go. And if truth be known, you guys are running the show. Let's be honest, you run the show. It's kind of like being vice president. The vice president always does more work of an organization than the president does, okay? So you need to be very, very proud of that. Uh, Today, I understand everybody in this room is a diva, like I said a while ago. <laughs> My only concern is, what do you call, what is the terminology for a male diva? What do you call a male diva? Male diva. <laughs> 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 it depends on who you're talking to. Yeah. What if somebody calls us a diva? I can't thank you for the words, but I can't say that. You really utilize this opportunity to act like a diva the rest of the day. You've earned it, so take charge. Um, and it's time to go. I'm on the men's basketball committee, and it's a five year term. I finished my fourth year, and we're waiting to see if I'm going to get my fifth year, but because we're changing conferences, our conference may kick me off. So we're waiting to see. But it is an unbelievable experience, and we're the group that picks the 68 teams that go to the NCAA championship. So if you guys follow the tournament, and the ESPN and all, you know, when they're blasting the committee, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> you get some little perks, and because of that, my staff, uh, you know, when we go to the Final Four, we're taken to the games that every, every night in, uh, and show the police escorted limos, and I mean, it's a, when, when I went to the Final Four in Houston, I didn't have a room, I had a suite. You know, when we go around, because the local organizing committees are trying to get more Final Fours back, so they wind and dine these 10 people, so it's pretty unbelievable. But, uh, so my staff calls me a diva, uh, and uh, my, I want to give you this experience, and I don't want, I, it's, it's hilarious, but, and I don't want you to think this is an ego thing, but, um, <laughs> The last real deep experience I had was we had a meeting this fall in New Orleans. And so when you get to the airport, a member of the local organizing committee meets you, and then they have a driver that takes you to the hotel. Uh, so when I got there, this, this young lady was there, and I had forgotten some things at home, and I said, is there any way, where we're staying downtown, is there a department store or something that I can pick some things up at? <coughs> Excuse me. And she said, well, but we'll take you by. I said, no, no, just get me downtown and I'll walk. No, no, we'll take you by. So she talked to the driver. So when I got to the car, I mean, it's a driver with a hat. You know, it's a black town car, tinted glass of a bit. Me in the back seat, him driving. And so um, he says, oh, I'll just run you by Walmart. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> You know, the Walmart we stopped in probably wasn't the best side of New Orleans, but we so we stopped at Walmart and he was right at the front door. It's <laughs> out of the door. Oh, he was right at the I run into Walmart to get my pantyhose. And all these people are watching. And then, you know, when I come back out, he's standing by the car and then he opens the door and I hear this. committee 
it's a wonderful bit. And they love that story. So. <laughs> um, in the world I work in, in athletics, it is an automatic thing that, just like Ann spoke to, that everybody understands that we work with teams. We're all about putting teams together and helping teams to be successful. Uh, it's pretty much win, 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 I'll be honest. It is. That's part of our world. Uh, but it's winning in a lot of different areas. It's winning with the kids academically, athletically, socially. There's a, there's a lot of, and it's a business. It's a multi-million dollar business. So it's a very difficult thing to balance. That you're running a business, but at the same time, we're supposed to be helping to educate 18, 19, 20 year olds and, and, and helping them grow up. And it's sometimes a difficult thing to balance. So if you have a young person that messes up, you really need to win the game, and they get, do you sit them on the bench? You play, it's, it's tough. It's a lot. If, if you were on the inside, it would be pretty amazing sometimes the dynamics we have to go through in, in raising these kids in the middle of a million dollar business. But I, I think uh, the one thing that I think you would be very surprised about if we, you know, we're known for a campus of diversity. But if we would sit and visit in this room, we would find out that we have a lot more things in common than we have that are diverse. And one of probably the most common things that we all share is this experience of being on teams. There is not one person in this room that has not been on a team. And most, you know, Let's be honest, from the moment you're born, you're on a team, you're family. Then typically we progress to probably a church, preschool, then school, then jobs, you're in organizations and schools, but for your whole life, you're on teams. So not to have an understanding of the concept of what you can do to be the best team member, best team leader, is really kind of put your head in the sand because you're there. And so when when uh, when we we talk about teamwork, I want you to remember that that's not an evil. When, that, when people say teams, oh, that's those athletic people because they're just trying to win at all costs. No, baby, that's you. We're, we're all in that same world, and it's not evil. And and um, I hope that everybody in this room wants to be the best they can be. No matter what your role, no matter what your team. I, I, quite honestly, I can't imagine existing any other way. And the people that I've met that have given up, don't try, are about the most miserable people I've ever met. So, so it's not wrong to want to be the best. I really think that was one of the primary reasons why we were created. Because we were created um, to be here to, and, and I'm going to express some things about my faith, and in, in no way do I want to be insulted to anyone. This, this is my philosophy. And we were really created here to worship God. And the best way you can worship Him is that you make something of yourself. Uh, so I think that's very, very important. I also believe that there's a plan for all of us. I believe we all have a life plan. The difficulty of it is some of us are going to figure it out quicker than others. <laughs> you know, but that's that's what life is.